trade and industry minister Chan Chun Singh says that beyond COVID-19, science and tech will be a key source of competitive advantage for Singapore in the decades to come. He's told the President's Science and Technology Awards, the annual accolades, are a statement of the country's commitment to these areas. He says the awards underscore the country's pledge to develop its people and stay connected to the rest of the world. We've also augmented our local talent pool with the best and brightest from around the world in a calibrated manner, as we have always done so. This year's President's Science and Technology Award winners include both local and international researchers and engineers, a testament to how Singapore harnesses both the local and international talent to build long-term capabilities for Singapore, thereby keeping our economy and companies competitive. Three researchers picked up the Young Scientist Awards handed out to those under 35 years old. The winners include those working on gene editing therapy, wireless healthcare technologies, and cancer and stem cell research. Professor Ranga Krishnan was presented with the highest accolade, the President's Science and Technology Medal. He was recognized for his outstanding leadership contributions to advancing the health and biomedical sciences research and innovation sector in Singapore. Four others picked up the Science Awards, while one was presented with the Technology Award. Well, we want to find out more, and for that, we're joined by Professor Liu Jian Jun, recipient of the President's Science Award, and Dr. Chu Wei Liang, recipient of the Young Scientist Award. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, Professor Liu, to you first, perhaps. Now, your work focuses on the genetics of Asian populations and the diseases that affect this particular group. Now, which diseases are more prevalent uh, among Asians and how has your research led to more precise treatment? Hi. Um, yeah, pleasure to be here. Um, there are many cases and one of the example is uh, nasopharyngeal carcinoma, NPC. This is a cancer that happened inside the nose. And this particular condition is a very common in Southern China and Southeast Asia, where the disease prevalence is 20 times higher than the other region of the world. And our research has now discovered that the specific strains of a virus and called EBV, they're causing development in DC. And these virus strains are very, very common in Southern China and also Southeast Asia. And, but they are absent uh, from uh, Outside, trend, uh, outside Asia. So this is a very good example where the Asians are definitely more vulnerable to this condition compared to other regions of the world. So Professor Liu, tell us how big a role then genes play in deciding how likely a person is to get certain diseases or how they will in fact respond to certain treatments. Yeah, there are also plenty of, uh, you know, cases and uh, I will use another study of our study as an example. And Dapsin is a very effective antibiotic that is commonly used for treating infections. But the Dapsin treatment can sometimes cause a severe adverse drug reaction or side effect in some patients. And our research has now discovered that this, the incurrence of this uh, severe side effect is, uh, is controlled uh, by the gene called HLA-B1301. And this condition only happens in the patients who carry this gene. Unfortunately, uh, this gene only exists in Asia. It's an Asian-specific uh, virus, and they're not exist outside Asia. So, and in this case, you know, the gene is really uh, controlling the occurrence of very a severe side event. And this is just another example, you know, uh, Asians are uh, to be more vulnerable to this condition than our Western counterparts. Dr. Chu, uh, you have pioneered uh, the technology for disease gene correction and gene expression control. Uh, just for all of us, in simple layman's term, what does this mean? How does it work? Yeah, so DNA is the blueprint of life. It encodes the genes that determine who we are and uh, how our bodies function. Uh, if there are problems with DNA, it can result in diseases. 
So our team develops uh, technologies to make pinpoint changes to DNA. Uh, we pioneered the technology of CRISPR-Cas9 uh, for gene editing within body. So this means that we can use CRISPR-Cas9, these are molecular machines that go into the cells within the body and perform molecular surgery on the DNA. This is important because CRISPR-Cas, hence, can edit our gene and permanently fix the genetic diseases at their root causes. So help us connect the dots then. How does your research uh, complement what Professor Liu is doing with regards to population genetics? Yeah, it's extremely important for us to build the technologies and therapeutics that could benefit people, particularly in Singapore. This is where we are. Um, as with uh, Professor JJ, uh, my colleagues in Genome Institute of Singapore of ASTAR, um, they have found uh, very astonishing uh, differences between the Asian population genetics and the uh, more commonly studied Caucasian genetics. This means that uh, many of us in Singapore and in, the, in Asia would have uh, different genetic uh, deposition and also different uh, mutations that could result in diseases. What is important for us here then is to take these findings that have significant impact uh, to Singaporeans and to develop the therapeutics that could eventually benefit people in Singapore. Uh, well, to do this, uh, we have to uh, uh, solve many hardships. Go ahead. Oh, I, I uh, just wanted to ask yeah, you to, to carry on. To do this, on. we have to solve many. Yeah. Yeah, um, sure. Uh, to do this, we have to solve many hard challenges uh, in terms of the technical uh, aspects and uh, uh, before CRISPR-Cas could be safely and efficiently used in the clinic. Okay, I, I also wanted to congratulate you and wish you luck for that uh, future project that you're working on. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for coming in and speaking with us. We've been speaking there with um, Professor Liu Jianjun, recipient of the President Science Award, Science Award, and Dr. Chu Wei Leong, recipient of the Young Scientists Award.